Good afternoon. It's Thursday, the 5th of March, 2015, just after one o'clock. Welcome to UK Column News. I'm your host, Brian Gerris. With me in the studio, Mike Robinson. Afternoon. And behind the technical desk, Nick Green. Well, we're very pleased to say it's pretty sunny here in Plymouth. It's still a bit chilly with uh, quite a frost overnight. Uh, we've got some good reports. It's sunny in Penzance. And for those of you that don't know, that's sort of tucked away on the end of Cornwall. London also sunny, but bad news for those in uh, Wales. It's pretty cloudy in Rill and uh, Pembrokeshire in general. Unfortunately, we haven't got reports for north of the border, but hopefully we may be able to correct that tomorrow. But we can inform you due to those hardworking beavers and ground squirrels reported by the Daily Telegraph that there is still weather in Scotland. Well, politically, we're seeing extraordinary scenes as the non-election fails to unfold, but we'll have more on that in due course. But we'd just like to start with an extraordinary uh, report which uh, UK Column has received that uh, the BBC is apparently planning a massive panorama investigation into the alternative media. Um, the reports from uh, supposedly reliable um, insiders is that this is not just a one-off program it's going to be a two-part program taking apart uh, alternative media people in UK so uh, we just thought we'd uh, mention it so UK column has tweeted out this morning that uh, this is what we're hearing of course uh, what we've got on screen is the BBC lining up with its usual propaganda but uh, just where is this election Mike no electioneering uh, no swamping the BBC with reports, something special happening. So no drive by the BBC to talk about the election. Uh, but uh, apparently what they're doing is lining up to hit alternative media, presumably the UK column and others. And others, but uh, I think even broader than that, potentially activists in general. So, so, uh, but focusing on alternative media, certainly. Well, it seems interesting that just as uh, Russia today starts to get to grips with the fraud, corruption and general dismantling of the British um, political system, and the government feels the need to attack Russia today, uh, in comes the BBC using our own uh, license fee money to attack us. Uh, well, well done, BBC. Um, UK Column's response to this is we are going to um, repeat our own um, week-long documentary into what the BBC is really about. We'll be having a look at the links between their various public and profit-making arms. And of course, we'll be having an in-depth look at the BBC's so-called charity, another political charity, BBC Media Action. If anybody out there is getting uh, approaches from the BBC and would care, care to tell us, we'd love to know. So stay with it. Well, um, what better place to go than Rothschild? Indeed. Yes. So this is uh, Lord Jacob Rothschild. He's now 78 years old. He is, of course, uh, head of one of the largest banking families on the planet, uh, and he's chairman of Red Capital Partners. Uh, this article really is, is a, a, a non-article in the sense that there's, that, that, that there's a, a comment made by him which is in the headline, but generally it seems to be a bit of adver an advertisement for Red Capital. Um, but, basically, but what he's saying here is that, uh, the, that the world is facing a difficult economic background uh, and that investors face a geopolitical situation perhaps as dangerous as any we have faced since World War II. And I suppose he would know since he's probably done something to help make it that way. But anyway, uh, uh, he said that this was the result of, according to the Telegraph, of chaos and extremism in the Middle East, Russian aggression and expansion and a weakened Europe threatened by horrendous unemployment in no small measure caused by a failure to tackle structural reforms in many of the countries uh, which form part of the European Union. That would be structural banking reforms, Lord Rothschild, uh, and I believe that those are your problem uh, or your, caused by you, uh, but uh, not just caused by you because, of course, uh, here is the uh, Bank of England, Britain's central bank, uh, or is it? Um, and it is now under investigation by the Serious Fraud Office. Now, the Bank of Ang England, as most people know, established in 1694. Uh, it's notionally our, our central bank, but it is, in fact, a commercial wholesale bank. It has many customers. The government is one customer. The, our monarch is uh, another, allegedly, uh, alongside other commercial banks, other governments, and other heads of state. 
Um, there's uh, much uh, discussion on the internet, of course, about who owns the bank. I don't think it really matters because the bank is operationally independent. It's run by bankers. And while Mike, Mark Carney, the, uh, the governor, is uh, notionally uh, installed in his position by the chancellor, um, that's really only um, sort of ceremon ceremonial, in my opinion. Um, it, uh, the bank, of course, exempt from Freedom of Information Act on commercial grounds. Uh, and it runs a nominee company, the Bank of England Nominees Limited, in order to hide assets that it holds on behalf of half of other customers. Um, so uh, the relationship between the bank and the government requires almost no accountability. There is none there. Uh, so really, what do they do? They have the Monetary Policy Commission uh, uh, Committee, sorry, which which uh, sets interest rates in order to uh, affect inflation. Uh, if inflation is too high or too low. Uh, the only accountability there is that there is a letter to George Osborne uh, from Mark Carney explaining why. So um, basically what we've got here is a commercial bank uh, with many, many customers other than the government. And so um, who, who actually, who, for whose benefit are they operating? Um, and uh, when I asked them that question and I said, you know, how do we know uh, whenever you're setting interest rates that you're doing that for the benefit of the nation and for not, not for the benefit of some of your other customers, um, they said, we wouldn't do that. Well, one of the other things that they wouldn't do, apparently, is commit fraud. Now, in fairness to the bank, uh, they did initiate this, uh, this um, uh, investigation in the first place, and they asked this man here, the unfortunately named Lord Grabener, uh, QC um, to investigate whether any senior staff at the bank knew of or even participated in a in liquidity auction rigging in 2007 2008 so basically what's gone on here is that members of staff at the bank allegedly uh, have um, rigged uh, one of the main mechanisms that was being used at the time to, to uh, uh, attempt to keep the financial system afloat um, so at the time, it was absolutely critical that things that were being done worked because otherwise the, the so-called Great Recession was going to be much worse and much deeper than it finally was. Um, there were people messing about with the thing in order to make, well, what were they doing? That, that remains to be seen. So the uh, Serious Fraud Office has been called in uh, and that investigation is ongoing. Uh, Mark Carney, of course, uh, he had no comment. The Canadian. The Canadian, yes. So we don't, we don't want any serious British control in the bank. Um, we give it to a Canadian. Yes. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Um, well, where do we go from there? Um, important constitutional issues. And thank you for uh, the person who uh, gave us the heads up that the SNP are now up to further tricks in order to, uh, one, um, increase their uh, vice-like grip on Scotland, but also to uh, meddle with constitutional issues. Um, so the BBC here, of course, um, busy pushing out that Nicola Sturgeon has her first audience with the Queen. Uh, of course, the public won't be told what uh, was in those uh, discussions. Uh, but it, um, it uh, took Breibart here to actually talk about some rather different things, that Scottish universities are accusing the SNP of threatening their independence. And basically the SNP is, um, is, uh, wants to tackle the, the academic independence of the universities. And it wants, as they say, to, uh, as the universities are saying, to bring politicians very close to the governance of institutions. So here we've got absolute political reframing, Chinese style. You're not gonna have education for education's sake. It's gonna be politicized. And apparently the SNP also want to replace the role of the Privy Council in administering universities uh, with a new Scottish executive. So Alex Salmon steps to one side. Of course, he's been a bit bruised by the Holly Gregg affair and his tussle with the Information Commissioner. Uh, so Nicola Sturgeon in straight in with the Queen and uh, what's going on behind the scenes attack on the Constitution. Are we allowed to mention the Holly Gregg affair? Um, we are. We are, yes. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Over to you. Um, right. Well, at the conference uh, at the weekend, um, this website was uh, pointed in my direction. So I thought I would uh, have, a, have a look. It was being presented as the Community Connector, as you can see, uh, uniting individuals, communities and organizations to work together for a better future. Um, and one of the themes among the people that were at the conference was that indeed we, we need to be working closer together. 
Um, but I thought I would have a look at this. Um, and uh, indeed, uh, the UK column appears to be already there. Um, uh, this, this was the first that we'd heard of this. But anyway, it, it does say in the disclaimer in blue there that the UK column does not currently have representation on this website. These details may not have been submitted by a representative of the UK column, and indeed they were not. Uh, and the accuracy of these details can't be guaranteed. This listing does not in any way represent an endorsement by the UK column of either the Community Connector or any other group organisation listed. If you're a representative of the UK column would like to modify the listing, please contact us. Um, I'm afraid we won't be doing that, but I'll come on to why that is. So here's the idea. Uh, the problem is not the lack of collective desire for a positive future, but the lack of a collective vehicle for positive actions. That's according to Randy Paul. And they say that around the world, uh, there are hundreds of thousands of groups and organisations who have social justice at the core of their objectives from large international organisations to small local community groups. Imagine if the millions of members of these organisations recognising their shared objectives begin to connect and work together on a local level to take real meaningful action starting in their, their own communities. By joining this website you will discover neighbours throughout your community who share your desire to take positive action and create a better future. How does that sound? Uh, it sounds to me like data mining. Right, so who, who's behind it? Well, Matt is behind it, and uh, I have to say, I've spoken to Matt a number of times over the last couple of years. Matt is the same website developer, developer that was behind the, uh, the Reset uh, website and, and a couple of other uh, websites. Um, but this was the bit that, that really sort of made me feel a little uncomfortable, um, because this is part of the, what they're doing with the data, is to use the 12 sectors, the wheel of co-creation. This is from Barbara Marks Hubbard. Uh, and uh, what it says here is uh, throughout this website, 12 key societal sectors are used to identify the skills and passions of individuals and represent the focus of organizations and groups. The Wheel of Co-Creation, first identified by Dr. Barbara Marks Hubbard, covers all areas of human activity and comprises the full list of the basic functions of any community. These sectors provide us with a reliable and integrated, integrative model for our collective transformation. Uh, by cross-referencing how both individuals and organisations sit within these 12 sectors, we can facilitate productive and balanced uh, connections and collaborations. Now, you know, I, I think Matt is a, is a reasonable uh, guy. I don't think there's anything uh, necessarily ne uh, evil behind this. Uh, but I would just say to, to Matt and anybody that's considering using this, why make GCHQ's job easier? Yeah, draw in anybody who's doing something, get them all into a structure, bring everything together in a huge electronic database. And then, of course, um, uh, Britain security services have got nothing better to do, uh, simply scoop the whole lot up. So is, is this, do you think this is ignorance or is it by design or is... Do, do you think maybe this is an operation by the security services? I don't know the answer to that. Maybe the BBC's behind it. Mm. It's getting complicated. Anyway, just to, as by the way, Barbara, Barbara Marks Hubbard suggests you probably don't use her as, as the uh, sort of um, figurehead for this. Uh, she is Club of Rome, after all, and uh, all that re represents. Okay. Well, of course, you dealt with constitutional attacks at the conference. So. I, I did. Now, we have a, a, an advert here for, for my talk from the conference. Unfortunately, it will not go out immediately after this program, as it says on this uh, uh, slide because, uh, well, the computer that was churning it out ready for play out has, uh, seems to have hung and therefore we have to start that process again. So it will go out at 21.30 after this, the repeat of this news uh, this evening. Okay. Well, of course, what is the big agenda in Britain? It is the massive cover-up of the sexual, physical abuse, the rape, uh, torture and murder of uh, not only British children but children uh, from... Uh, overseas people staying in UK. Uh, why has the UK column stayed on this subject? Because quite simply, it's our view that if we have a government, if we have politicians who are prepared to lie and cover up the abuse of our children, then of course we cannot trust them on any other policy that they put forward. So quite remarkable that um, the Oxford report is uh, now being picked up by the mainstream press and uh, the Mail Online here is busy talking about this um, Oxford um, child care chief, Andy Caldrick. Uh, he moved on to new pa uh, pastures as chief executive of Wokingham Council, but he was in post uh, when all the problems were starting in, um, in Oxford. 
Um, and apparently this man allegedly thwarted a former police officer's attempts to raise concerns about child abuse by Asian men. A serious case review report has just revealed that a council worker who wrote a series of emails warning of child abuse by Asian men in Oxfordshire was silenced after a complaint by senior officials. Uh, the worker, an ex-detective, well, that must have given him a step up the ladder, repeatedly raised concerns with the director of children's services and other officials at County Hall in 2007 after seeing a 13-year-old in bed with an adult. He also reported a stream of men going into a flat day and night, but instead of dealing with his complaints, uh, he uh, was uh, effectively then investigated about his unprofessional behaviour. Now, of course, our interest in this is we accept that the abuses were going on. We accept that, of course, Oxfordshire County Council and City Council and their safeguarding board uh, deliberately hid, covered up and blocked the investigation of these cases. But our point is that while this was going on, uh, the very same Oxfordshire Council, Councils and Safeguarding Board simply refused to investigate the accurate evidence of an Asian who was reporting abuse of white children by white abusers. And we should bring in here Sarah Thornton. Of course, her police officers are criticised. Thames Valley Police heavily criticised for their failures to protect children, scores of girls. Uh, she's now been promoted in charge of all of the uh, country's chief constables, as we've reported before. But of course, this is the very same chief constable that refused to properly investigate serious sexual and physical abuse of children at Oxford and Cherwell Valley College. And it has only been the UK column that reported, of course, she's a common purpose future leader as was the chief executive of the local council and the head Sally Dicketts of Oxford and Cherwell Valley College. So future leadership of failure, we've seen this before with Lynn Homer with regard to uh, Birmingham and, uh, and border controls and the treasury and transport. Are we seeing the same failure of common purpose leaders with Thames Valley Police? So the focus that the BBC and the media and the press would have, of course, is all paedophiles are Asians. This is the nonsense being spewed out by mainstream propaganda. And why are they doing it? Well, it's to hide this sort of report that does just creep in in the background. And it's taken the mirror here to report that ex-Tory MP Harvey Proctor um, has had his home investigated by Met Police under Operation Midland. Uh, that is uh, supposedly the police investigation into abuse of boys at Dolphin Square. And uh, there have been reports of youngsters murdered uh, within the confines of Dolphin Square and those horrific sex parties. Mm. So the government line is paedophiles are all Asian and uh, that is being used as the distraction from other serious reports of child abuse. Well, here he is, Robert Green. Um, attended Aberdeen Court yesterday for his sentencing. And uh, we did tweet this out yesterday. Uh, Robert leaves Aberdeen Court with 250 hours of community service, yet more punishment for trying to, abuse, uh, for trying to expose child abuse. So Robert Green, ex uh, imprisoned twice, held for nearly a year under, effectively under house arrest for blowing the whistle on child abuse in Scotland, uh, 250 hours over two years and gagged for life with no appeal. Uh, welcome to Child Protection Lib Lab SNP Con style. What can you say, Mike? Well, we're going to have David uh, on tomorrow to discuss this, um, I believe. So, uh, so more details tomorrow on that. But it is a staggering yeah. situation that somebody who is uh, attempting to... Um, expose uh, child abuse is treated in this way yep. and uh, for any of the naysayers on the uh, case that we're apparently not allowed to mention uh, then um, really this should be enough should it not <laughs> if well, the if, scottish if, establishment if, is so frightened of the subject after no proper investigation by the police uh, that you you impose a lifelong gagging exactly gagging order just incredible and of course, this case isn't isolated. We are going to keep repeating that this very brave lady, Melanie Shaw, 
uh, the abuse that she's described to the UK column team, virtually too horrific to talk about live. And where is she now? She's back in the care of the British state, literally disappeared into the gulag of Britain's private prisons under Sodexo. We have no letters from her, no telephone calls. And I can tell our listeners and viewers today that uh, Sodexo has now said that its policy is it will not allow lay legal advisers into the prison, even though, of course, lay legal advisers have full and proper standing at law in courts. So we've got a profit making prison uh, simply making up law on the hoof. And what is the game to silence another abuse victim? Well, is Melanie, uh, is Melanie alone? Well, of course not. Let's remind ourselves of the hounding victimization and abuse of another very brave mother, Vicky Haig, uh, simply disappearing into the prison gulag because she attempted to stand up for her children. And it's taken people like um, Chris, Christopher Booker from The Telegraph to actually report. And here he is. Most shocking of all is the way these inhuman actions are then supported by a court system, which often seems rigged against the parents and the children to the point where they're forbidden to speak at all, except through lawyers who appear as complicit in the system as the social workers themselves. Uh, when is this horrible national scandal going to get the wider attention it deserves? And look at the note underneath the Telegraph says, for legal reasons, comments have been disabled on this story. So we couldn't put it, we couldn't have put it better than uh, Christopher Booker, a massive cover up. This is not affecting one or two cases. Some of the names listed here of cases UK Column has dealt with. And as we say in the headlines, shh, say too much, expose too much, and you can expect to be banged up in prison. Now we're going to say pretty strongly today, uh, we're going to publicly ask why it is that Liberal Democrat MP John Hemming will not call for a full press and media conference and invite all of the people that have suffered under the hands of the family court system and the paedophile rings and the cover up. Why will he not bring them together into one big venue to bring this out into the open once and for all. And we'll be looking for answers from Mr. John Hemming and indeed supporters of Mr. Hemming who are clearly not gripping this issue of abuse. Well, we can't expect this happy couple to do much. Uh, we've shown this before, the image of uh, uh, David Cameron. This is the image he wants projected, of course, for the election. Uh, clean church going people, smartly dressed, little bit of casualness there with no tie. Uh, trust him. Well, of course, others say something rather different. So Simon Danzik has said this MP wants to cover up and move on from the child abuse. And of course, we're going to jail uh, people who've now got the very difficult job of looking after children. So there we are. If you want to vote for David Cameron, just make sure you know what you're going to get. You're going to get nice people on the outside but they're not going to do anything for uh, literally for people involved in exposing child abuse. And the Times, of course, Mike highlighted yesterday this remarkable picture. Again, here is the massive campaign to brand Muslims as uh, paedophiles. But this is what's really going on. We can put the words in for Nick Clegg. It's worked a treat. Blame the Muslims for paedophilia and all the heat is off Leon Britton, Elm Guesthouse, Savile and Westminster. Great work by the BBC too. Public, I just love them. Mm. So are we going to accept this uh, or are we going to stand up and be counted? The corruption is in front of our eyes. And that probably takes us on very nicely to the election, I would think. Election? What election? Uh, do we have an election? Well, there was a rumour that uh, May, I'm sure, May 2015, I read something about an election. Well, according to the Fixed-Term Parliaments Act, there is an election, but uh, of course, what is going on? Do you no. see any b battle buses on the streets? No battle buses, no leaflets, no reports, nothing in the local papers, nothing of substance on the BBC. All of a sudden, we've got a British election where there is no substance. And of course, that is to dumb down. This is to drive the uh, 
uh, hung parliament, then we get the super coalition. Well, I, I think I think the reason for it is that, the, that there, there's so many backroom uh, negotiations going on at the moment in order to decide who's going to form this uh, this rainbow coalition um, but, that they don't have time to be out in the streets campaigning. Okay, I'll accept that. Right, and, and in fact, David Cameron is so busy with these negotiations that he doesn't have time to take part in the television debates and he has now made his final offer, according to The Independent here, uh, on uh, on one debate, which is going to take place by the end of March. Uh, so there's going to be one television debate. Uh, he said uh, that he, well, he really criticised the broadcaster's plans because, of course, they want to include uh, all kinds of parties. This It's a, it's all play acting. This is not real, actually. Uh, the intention is that there will be one television debate with all the various parties there. And, of course, Democratic Unionist Party, because they found that Plaid Cymru and SNP and UKIP are all getting involved in this television debate. They've put in a legal challenge, uh, which uh, which Cameron says is, is legitimate. Um, so um, he's saying that he won't negotiate further on these. Uh, and this is all that's going on at the moment is negotiations, negotiations between the parties, negotiations between the parties and the, uh, and the mainstream media uh, and so on. And Cameron is saying this is our final offer. And to be clear, given the fact that this has been a deeply unsatisfactory process and we're within a month of, a, of the short campaign, Two months ago, they were saying this was going to be the longest campaign ever, and now it's going to be a short campaign. Uh, the Prime Minister will not be par par uh, participating in more than one debate. Of course, it goes on, uh, because uh, the mainstream media presenting Farage's uh, comments, recent comments on immigration as a U-turn, uh, they're saying uh, that he has done a U-turn uh, by reducing the uh, size of the cap, or at least refusing to talk about uh, uh, the numbers that he would want to see on a cap on immigration. Uh, uh, but he has clarified that. He's saying, I'm not putting caps on targets. You need to have more flexibility than that. You cannot have anything in politics without people obsessing over caps and targets. And I think people are bored of it. And he said to the BBC, I think it was this morning on, uh, on the Today programme, uh, I want to bring Im immigration to Britain back to normality and normality from 1950 until nearly the year 200 from Windrush onwards. Normality was net migration into Britain, which varied between uh, 70, uh, sorry, 20,000 and 50,000 a year. The effect of UKIP policies would be to bring us back to those kinds of numbers. Uh, of course, for, uh, Osborne and the others saying that uh, Farage is uh, making it up as he goes along. There's a certain irony in George Osborne saying that anybody else is making it up as they go along. But, um, well, well, no, he should know, Mike. Since well, he's an he expert at making it, yes. it up, he yeah. recognise it. Okay. Yeah. So, so you know, what's going on here? Is Farage actually, is this part of the backroom deals that are going on and he's actually changing his policy and, U -turn, and carrying out a U-turn or is this just more stuff in the press which is designed to get at UKIP? Well, I think this maybe gives a little bit of the uh, flavour of it. Uh, the dominatrix who believes Nigel Farage has been sent from God uh, to save us from foreign invasion uh, and uh, and so on. I mean, this is this is just dross. This is about this Channel Five program, which is being um, shown, I believe, tonight. Farage fans and UKIP lovers. The the mail article starts off by saying, UKIP supporters have been labelled fruitcakes, loonies, and closet racists. And one fan fan of Nigel Farage is doing little to dispel the idea. I mean, this is they're. They're having to carefully manage UKIP. It seems they must be concerned that perhaps they might get ahead a little bit and they want to keep, make sure that they're reined in. Well, well, like the other parties, Mike, we, we know that uh, within UKIP, of course, a lot of people are really um, waking up and understanding the fact that we are looking at a political scam across the board. Uh, and I think this is the first time that the establishments had to deal with this. So if they attack them too hard, they could create a backlash so what you get in there is, is you try and undermine them, destroy credibility. Uh, presumably, that's what Panorama is uh, working hard to do. Indeed. Yeah, amazing. Well, with a 3.65 uh, billion budget of public money, uh, presumably the BBC can produce a good programme. We'll, we'll wait and see. If the BBC yes. wants any help, of course, they only need to ask. Haven't we had any phone calls? Not yet. No. OK, well, BBC, if you're doing a documentary on us and you'd like some help, just get in touch and uh, we're very happy to have you down for a cup of coffee and a discussion on why the BBC pulled their investigation in, into paedophiles at work at Oxford and Cherville Valley College. We'll be playing out that recorded conversation again for uh, listeners 
uh, in the coming few days. Well, let's look at what the Plymouth Herald thinks is important. Uh, we can't feed people, uh, but here we are. We've, uh, we've got a report. Uh, council hand job advert goes viral. Uh, so this is uh, regarded as being sensible news, childish um, smut put out as though it has some news value. Uh, council advert has had Facebook users in stitches after town hall bosses advertise for a general hand job. Uh, let's just think about the climate. We've got Plymouth where people are sleeping rough on the streets. We haven't got enough accommodation. They can't feed themselves. And this is the quality of our local newspaper. But wait, it gets better uh, because here they are celebrating arts. There's a plan for a £7,000 piece of public art on Plymouth Hoe which is going to be celebrating stamp collecting. So the Herald has spent the morning creating a picture to see what the stamp would look like. And uh, if you think this is not real, it gets better because Plymouth, where we can't feed people or give them accommodation, has got a 50K grant somewhere available to fund art projects. Uh, this is the attack on people's minds. This is the mindless, depressing art. It's serious political stuff. I would imagine linked to the uh, Applied Behavioural Psychology Unit in the Cabinet Office. Mm. OK, well, if we've alarmed you, we say keep calm and carry on. Uh, we predicted, uh, we have predicted many times that the aim was to create chaos in UK in order to break up the nation. And uh, we know that the plan at the election is a rainbow super coalition. That is effectively a one party state. Uh, what do we need to do? We need to stand up and be counted, keep calm. And uh, if you're awake, get out there explaining to people who are now getting really quite spooked as to what's going on and are clearly hungry for knowledge. Mm. Well, thank you for joining us. Uh, we will be back at the same time tomorrow. We will hope to have a report from north of the border, which we know you all enjoy. And there we are. We've completed another programme on a budget a little bit under 3.65 billion. Mm. I don't know how we do it, Mike. Okay, thanks for joining us. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.